Spring in the air, we're just talking about it. Uh, with uh, great racing yesterday and coming up at uh, Flemington with the Craigley this week and the Chelmsford in Sydney. Keith Hillier with our special guest, Greg Hall. Always good to catch up with him, isn't it, Keith? Well, it is indeed. Uh, welcome, Greg. Yes, racing at Caulfield in, and, in fact, around the nation yesterday. Spring in the air, as Bruce said. Bundy Laddett was his third trip to Australia. He'd snared the list and the bill stuck before it, and we probably underestimated him yesterday. And David Hayes might get hold of him by the look of it. Yes, uh, the part owner and trainer has had uh, a chat with David, and it looks like the Bundy lad will join the Hay Stable, which probably made up for some of the disappointment of the failure of Primacy yesterday, Bruce, the favourite who finished sixth. Here, yeah, Palace Rain just in front of him. Greg, you rode Trista Love. We'll get to Max in one moment before we show the Memsey. What did you think of her run, Trista Love? Oh, it was an excellent run, Bruce. Um, it's, it's quite unfair, the rail being at six metres. I mean, she got a long way back. Uh, but I said to the owner when she come in, she's come back terrific and she'll be very competitive and wait for age races. Keith, uh, well, I'll ask Keith as well, but Max, welcome and good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Well, I'm glad to hear that spring is in the air. Will somebody please tell the VATC the movable rail out six metres from an important meeting like yesterday's? Surely that uh, shouldn't be the case. They've got a game plan, Max. They've already set their rail placements for the entire spring. Uh, it's a very wide track. Um, Greg's in a better position to explain the disadvantage than I would understand, but I'm a little surprised that uh, jockeys were disadvantaged yesterday, Greg. Yeah, look, Keith, um, you know, I can understand if the track was heavy or slow and fair enough, the three days over the Caulfield Cup, three days, well, I, I could appreciate that, but the track was nearly impossible to mark. And uh, it's not fair to jockeys, owners, trainers. I'm not just the only one complaining, and more so the punters as well. I mean, when, when, once you get back, I was back there with Reading and um, Palace Rain and um, uh, Spanish Mix, and Spanish Mix moved up three or four deep, and then Reading went. And I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't go much wider before I caught the train back to Spencer Street. But so you've got to try and angle and look for runs, and uh, and uh, they just don't come the brakes with the rails yet. And it's not fair to not just jockey, it's not fair to everybody. Well, it was a flying race, wasn't it? Very fast run. Bundy lad uh, making the pace, and Trista Love actually gets a very checkered run in the straight. I thought her run was outstanding. This is Simon Marshall leading for home on Bundy lad. He probably got the ride because he couldn't make the weight of the uh, the mare Trista Love, who Greg rode. Uh, it turned out a winning move and. Bundy Lad really ran his rival's ragged. Trista Love, why was her run so good, Greg? Like Bruce said, she, she, she just had a chequered run sort of from the uh, 600 metres on. And I mean, you can only tell as a horseman, but I tell you what, this mare is very, very good. And she, you know, I mean, it was a bit of a test yesterday whether she would weigh up to uh, wait for age, but, you know, I can nearly guarantee she's, she's going to weigh up to wait for age. Don't worry about it. And she's very relaxed and she will, I'm sure she'll get at least 2,000 metres. Can Simon Marshall get you off her? Who gets the ride? <laughs> well, you're not, not sure, Bruce, who gets the ride, but uh, I'd be more than happy to ride, I can assure you. How many calls have you made this morning in that uh, regard? I tried to get Roy, actually, because he's, he's sort of got a little bit of say there, but I couldn't find him. <laughs> he Roy might, be, he might be dirty on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, she looked good. Uh, in fact, uh, Reading was a terrific run, and uh, I guess the Phantom Chance was the one you'd want to know about. S bemused, I think. Well, he said amused at first, I think, uh, Lee Friedman, but bemused, 17 lengths behind the winner. Got out to 40 to 1 at one stage, the, the Cox Plate winner of last season, the Phantom Chance. Uh, but his jockey, Bob Van, said that the Phantom Chance couldn't even win a maid at 1,600 metres or less a distance in New Zealand. Oh, it's hard to believe that he could be good, brilliant enough to win a Cox Plate and couldn't win a maiden at 1,600. Tell us about Dan Zero yesterday, Greg. The Golden Slipper winner coming back to winning form. I thought your ride was outstanding. Uh, taking the points and Hurricane Sky unable to really pressure you in the straight. Yeah, he, you know, I'm just... Uh, look, he'd work well and trial well, Bruce, and uh, I'm just relieved that he's a Golden Slipper winner and he's come back a super horse, you know. He, he's a great horse, this horse, and, you know, he, he had a good run in the race. Um, Hurricane Sky flew the start and I got back on his inside and... Um, Was that done by mirrors because you were behind him and then in front of him in a flash? It was an old trick of mine, okay? You know that, mate. No, but... Uh, he, and I, the thing I like about this horse, he's very relaxed and... Um, we're sure he'll get the, at least get the guineas distance and it won't shock me if he gets the derby distance. What did you think of him, Max? You thought some cover was the outstanding two-year-old last year? 
Yes, uh, certainly, but not by far on Dan Zero. I support Greg Hall here. This is an outstanding racehorse, like Mahogany. Perhaps Dan Zero is better suited over the sprint courses, but he got, he's got so much class, he could get the derby distance. Keeps telling you, Max, uh, Greg, that uh, Mahogany can't stay. What did you win the derby by here on uh, last November? Only five. Uh, only five. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, the point is a class horse on, will win Max. over any distance. Superimpose was a great miler. Didn't stop him from being a good two miler. No, he was placed at a Melbourne Cup, wasn't he, Max? We Gunson was placed at a Melbourne Cup. We could go on forever, Max, but we're out of time. Class Port is not everything, Max. I mean, you've got plenty of class, but sadly it's all third. Who won the AJC <laughs> derby, Bruce? I thought Mahogany won that one as That's well. That's and a half as well, At Randwick it is. <laughs> what about Port Watch yesterday? Second behind Mahogany in the Guineas was a very soft win, Damien Oliver. Alan on seemed to get uh, run into the rail a couple of times at the 200, but was a beaten horse. Do you like this one, Greg? I mean, you've been involved with Paris Lane and also Mahogany, the same age group as this Friedman horse. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a good racehorse, this horse. He did run second in Mahogany in the Guineas, um, and his work had been very well leading up to this, and he, he, yeah, Lee will pick up some nice races with this horse. Well, it's another Friedman horse. Damien Oliver, our Premier Jockey for the past two seasons, he was the Friedman's apprentice. Have you wormed your way into the stable there and, and taken over the cream of the mounds, Greg? Bruce is on a tight schedule, Kevin, and we haven't got time. We need more than two hours. <laughs> Max, it is fascinating, the G. Hall versus D. Oliver and S. Marshall thrown in for the Friedman stable, but we want to keep moving, Max. I know you write about it in the Sydney Morning Herald this week, Max. That, yeah. Tell us about Brave Warrior. I loved the run yesterday. Yes, well, if you had your money on, of course you'd love the run because it was a good gutsy effort. Uh, Brave Warrior is, is, is a top-class racehorse. He's there in the pink colours behind a wall of horses now. Got the split and uh, he was well-trained, I thought, yesterday and well-ridden by Chris Muntz. But down the outside comes Simulcast. Now, Simulcast is still a maiden and this is the, the key to it. Now, Brave Warrior, as you can see, going strongly out after Just a Printer. Here comes Simulcast. For a couple of strides, he looks like he might have him. But the sign of a good horse, Brave Warrior finds something, goes on and wins. But again, Brave Warrior had to win. And if he'd been, a, let's say, a half-length worse run, it would have been very disappointing. I don't know whether Brave Warrior's got the class of Greg Hall's horse, Dan Zero, but certainly he's a game horse. He's going to figure prominently into it. And all the theories of racing, simulcast should get better and perhaps uh, up to a mile prove a very worthy foe. But Brave up Warrior is Up to a mile, Max. He's not a Victoria Derby uh, contender. That's the intention, I believe, from the stable. Simulcast? No, well, simulcast, is, uh, according to Alan Bell, could have doubts on the dam side as far as staying is concerned. But good racehorses, as I said before, good racehorses will get any distance, particularly against their own age. Did you see Brave Warrior as a two-year-old? I've watched, yeah, I've watched him uh, a hell of a lot, Bruce, and I'm, I'll, I'll agree with Maxie. I, I want to see him down here in the spring. See how that'll, that'll sort him right out. Okay, well, you talked about a maiden. Uh, Just Awesome was a maiden, Max, until two starts ago. He's a pretty handy horse. They ran a bit of time in this as well. Yes, well, Just Awesome has come solid. Very strong pace up front, which uh, made it a very demanding race. Uh, the surprise was the, the short price of Rooslan on the fence getting a very cosy run at present. Is it true, Max, that, four. Sorry, is it true that one punter well-known lost $250,000 on Rooslan? Well, that's the race course rumour. Sometimes Sometimes race course rumours aren't uh, entirely correct, Bruce, but uh, certainly he lost and this was one of his losing bets. Cassidy gets the split at the right time. At this point he would have been on good terms with himself, follows a stride later, but down the outside, just awesome. Come solid, a, a, a three-year-old last year that couldn't break his maiden, but as a four-year-old he's going to win more races. Captingly should improve too, but just awesome's the one I like from the race. Greg, we've got 20 seconds. Tell us about Mahogany winning the list in last week and your feeling about about him this year? Well, he's, he's, he's just an awesome horse, Bruce. I mean, it was just incredible. He's, he's, his sectional times, the, the turn of foot he's got, and I mean, touch wood, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun this spring with him, I think. Max, he tried to touch Keith on the head then, but he couldn't quite <laughs> reach it. And now, don't forget, you gentlemen, Legacy, don't forget to buy a badge on Friday, Greggy. A badge Friday oh, for Legacy. For sure. Keith, Catch up with you. Melbourne Cup waits out Thursday, Bruce. Thank you. Sandy back next week. Look after him, Keith. Great. Greg, great to catch you. Max, I'll see you in about a fortnight. Look forward to it. We'll take a break. Back with more after this.